Hello and welcome to Real to Real today from Our Lady of the Cross Parish in Holyoke. It was five years ago that the former Mater Dolorosa and Holy Cross parishes merged together as one faith community. Both had a long history in Holyoke, which included many wonderful traditions passed down over the generations. And as Steve Kiltonic now tells us, although some parishioners initially felt some apprehensions, on this fifth year anniversary, there is much to be thankful for. When Mata Dolorosa and Holy Cross parishes were first established, ethnic parishes were not the exception, but the norm. Mata Dolorosa was founded in 1896, primarily for the Polish community. Across town in the Highlands section of Holyoke, Holy Cross was founded in 1905 for the city's Irish. Each parish has a long history in the paper city, with many traditions and customs brought over during the Great Immigration Waves. But in 2011, as a result of the pastoral planning process, along with structural damage to the church, Mata Dolorosa closed. Both parishes merged, and a new parish, Our Lady of the Cross, was established with the conventual Franciscan friars as administrators. The first Mass was held on July 3, 2011 at Holy Cross, which was chosen as the new worship site. In the immediate years after the merger, Father Albert Scheer admits it was an uneasy period for both parishes, especially after Mata Dolorosa appealed the closing to the Vatican. In the beginning, it was a little shaky at first because there was a, lo a lot of tension, sadness, um, hurt feelings initially. So we had some people that left uh, from Holy Cross. Some people from Mater Dolorosa never even came here to, to give it a try. So for the first couple of years, it was, it was difficult. Father Scheer noticed a turnaround when the annual Mato Dolorosa Fall Festival was revived. We decided to bring back the Polish food, and I put out an appeal for people to come together to make pierogies. We had like 50 people down there, Holy Cross people, Mato Dolorosa people working together, and I thought that was a good indication that things were going to get better. On September 18th, an anniversary Mass was held in celebration of the parish's fifth birthday. Springfield Bishop Mitchell Rosansky concelebrated the Mass with Father Shearer, Father Andrzej Brzezinski, and Father Stanley Sobiek. Each parish brought its own traditions to Our Lady of the Cross. Holy Cross was known for its adult faith formation programs, especially the Alpha and Life in the Spirit seminars in adoration. Mata de la Rosa was dedicated to its parochial school, youth faith formation, and the many social activities held in the St. John Paul II Social Center. Another event that was continued was the annual blessing of the pets, which many parishioners look forward to. Norma and John Raftery were longtime members of Holy Cross. John's parents emigrated to America in the 1930s from Galway and Mayo in Ireland. John, who grew up six blocks from the church, has been a member of Holy Cross over 70 years. He recalled the children's mass he attended with his parents. Some of the Masses, it was standing room only. Um, we had novenas during a week, and again, the church would just be packed. We had a, an active youth group in this parish. We put on musicals and shows, and we had Holy Cross Camp was in this parish, and it was, it was run by the parish. Coming in this church, I was so impressed with the edifice, I guess you'd call it. It was just so beautiful, and I felt very comfortable all the while. And um, did eventually join the choir, and enjoyed that work very much. Norma said prior to the merge, there was a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of talk about, um, it's going to be a Polish parish. People were frightened about it. The first thing Father warned us of is that you might not have your pew when you come into church on a Sunday. Somebody else is there. Shala and Romeo Martin belong to Mata Dolorosa for 25 years. What comes to mind is a nice Polish church, nice and cozy, much smaller than this church. It was cozy. We had a lot of statues. I'm 100% Polish, so we believe in statues. Because I like the traditions at uh, Mata Dolorosa, and I was, I was in the choir for about 25 years, and we sang a lot of Polish uh, songs mixed in with the English uh, hymns and uh, it just made you feel at home, you know. It uh, was a good feeling. It was at an Alpha Group meeting that the Rafteries and Martins first met. Charlotte is the cook for the Franciscans. 
She also runs the kitchen during the fall festival, where thousands of guamkis and pierogies are made for the hungry crowds. John and Norma are real lovely people. Oh, I, I always call them up to volunteer for something. I got them making pierogi, <laughs> running the, the pasta machine. Here I was, an Irish guy who walked into the Polish kitchen, and I couldn't tell you a pierogi from a galumpki, and, uh, you know, I was welcomed. It was strange. I really didn't know what I was doing, but got along with all the people I worked with down there, and there was no hostility shown toward either one of us. So what do you, um, so would you say it's been positive since the move? Very yes. positive. Very positive. Very it's positive. a slow, slow start, but... The, slow, it was a very and, slow start, yeah. but it's been five years, and yeah. we just love each other. Yeah. Every one we're, of these, we're blending, blending yeah, much better. Every now, one of these really, yeah. people are beautiful, beautiful nice, people. Yeah. Since merging, the nine o'clock Polish Mass was added. More Polish hymns and songs have been incorporated into holiday masses and special events like the anniversary mass. Father Roberts says that some new ministries have risen, such as a take and eat program where meals are provided for the needy. One constant at the parish is the offering of Catholic education. Mara de la Rosa's K-8 school remains a big part of the parish life. We have an excellent, uh, dedicated faculty. Many have been here for 20, 30 years, but we also have a mixture of younger, newer teachers as well. I think it just adds so much vitality to a parish. Besides the Mass, there have been numerous events held during this anniversary year. One of the highlights was in June when the St. Maximilian Kolbe relic made a three-day stop. And to help heal old wounds, some Mater Dolorosa artifacts may be moved this year. We are looking at possibly bringing in maybe the piata that's over Mater Dolorosa Church, which certainly would fit in with Our Lady of the Cross, the Sorrowful Mother, and perhaps maybe in one or two other statues. For three months this summer, former Mato de la Rosa student Sarah Mealy was hard at work creating two original murals at the St. John Paul II Center. Father Albert asked Sarah, a UMass Dartmouth graduate with a degree in illustration, to create something that would help people feel good about the merge. Sarah came up with the idea of a stained glass window design depicting both church exteriors. I tried to keep the setup and the background sort of the same to show the unity of both of them. But, you know, the styles of the churches are very, very different. And I tried to keep it, I mean, I can't do any less than colorful because I do like colorful work. The finished murals were unveiled at the anniversary mass luncheon. I've always kind of thought about how cool it would be to have something in the building that I've done. You know, I went here for so long and everyone knew that I was the artist, so I think they're going to be a little surprised. Father Shear remains upbeat about the future. We still have some work to go through, but I think we kind of turned the corner. It's been five years, but I also realized that it's going to take, you know, time for some individuals. But overall, I think we've grown a great deal together as our Lady of the Cross. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic. Congratulations to all here at Our Lady of the Cross who have worked so hard to join together as one community of faith and also best wishes to the Franciscan friars who staff this parish as this week we mark the feast of St. Francis.